Hi, Aisha. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Aisha. How are you? Fine. Hi, Adora. Hi. Hi, Fisario. So good Hi, to see you. you. Okay. Um, I hope you guys are doing well today. I hope you've had a good day. I'm doing amazing. <laughs> <laughs> had a great day it's as so well. It's lovely to see everyone. <laughs> That's nice. Um, so today we're going to be speaking on the topic, the impact of technology on the creative process and the future of creativity. Um, it's a creator summit and um, you guys are experts in your field and most of your field has to do with tech. So we want to talk on how technology um, intersects with creativity and how as creators we can leverage on tech technology to create better, to live better and to have better outputs. Um, so the first question I'd like to go into is um, a personal one. How has technology influenced your respective careers, your respective work? Um, in what ways has it transformed the way you go about like problem solving, the way you go about your work, the way you go about your processes? I'm going to allow Aisha to answer this question first, and then everybody else would, would go after Aisha. Okay, perfect. Let's get into it. Um, I think, you know, the impact of technology on my creative process is like undeniable. And this is something that has also evolved over time. Um, I think there's so many different areas that technology has been very helpful and will continue to be. Um, even if you just think about like, for example, I have a career in marketing, right? Like the fact that technology has allowed me to be able to access information and data around like customers, around your audience, around the tools and processes that you're using all of that like just impacts your efficiency impacts the kind of work that you can do your results so I would say that that's definitely one area um, and when you think about like how I also am able to go about my work like automating my automating like repetitive tasks just improving my process making sure that I'm as efficient as I can be and I'm utilizing my time and my resources in the best way possible to get the best outcomes um, and you know when you also think about like how you work together with people, like when you collaborate with teams, remote work is a thing because of technology, you know, like, and I, I can say that all of our careers have definitely changed in this age of like being able to work remotely. So being able to collaborate with people, things like your, you and someone else collaborating on a document, for example, I remember a world when that wasn't possible, you know, and that's now it's like a cake to even think of working and having to download documents and sending these people to review. But that's what we yeah. used to do before. There was a time when that's how we lived. You know, so I would say the as technology has been evolving, what you start to see is your work and your processes and your outcomes are also evolving for the better. So it's definitely made a significant impact. Like I can't even, I don't think we can, we can quantify how much impact it has really made in the creative process and in just my own like overall start to finish how I approach my work. I would say technology has done so much. <laughs> I'll just end it there before I <laughs> keep going. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Aisha. Oh, Michelle, what about you? How do you feel about the, the question? Um, yeah, I think that's a great question and like Aisha said, the first thing is, I think, making data-driven decisions for me as a designer. Um, as a designer, data is like one of the biggest parts of my work. You know, we need to know how the customers are using the products. We need to know why certain things are happening in the way they happen. Um, and without technology and the tools that technology provide, like Luca, for example, or Mixpanel, where you go into like a platform and you can literally see maps of how people are going through a website or going through a product, you know, it's really yeah. fascinating. Um, and in fact, my whole career is as a result of technology, you know, I work, in, I'm a product designer, so there's no like, Digital product design is as a result of technology. I think another thing is in, um, you know, when, when you think about user testing, for example, right? Before COVID hits, when we want to have like maybe a focus group or we want to have a usability test, you bring a couple of people together, maybe 10, 15, 20 people, and you put them in an office or you put them in a room and you give them some certain task with your product and tell them, you know what, I want to see how you're going to send money to someone and you watch them go through that process. But when COVID hits, 
we didn't have that that um, flexibility to be able to pull people together in person. Um, but thanks to tools like user testing, for example, we're able to still have those um, usability tests online. Um, and I can be in London, for example, and I'm reaching customers in Nigeria, I'm reaching customers in Bolivia, and putting all of them together in a space is something that I wouldn't have been able to achieve without technology. So yeah. as a designer, um, that's another way technology is really um, crucial to my work. Um, and I think another thing, for example, when I was working, when we're working on one of our recent projects, um, Colored Layers, right? It was so interesting because we were featuring like so many women, um, so many female designers in the ecosystem in Africa. And for each one of them, they have like a different journey and they have a different path and they have a different experience. However, they're all designers and every one of them had, they all have like similarities and teams across like their different um, careers that yeah. kind of makes it seem like they're all saying the same thing, but they're actually not saying the same thing. But leveraging technology, I was able to have access to different tools that could help me, you know, while I was writing and editing, you know, paraphrase words, um, gave me like different ways to think about how to communicate the same ideas. Um, yeah. and that's something that I, I found like really fascinating as well. And coming out of that and producing such body of work with over 30 women features and not one article or the other sounding alike or looking like it's the same person who wrote them, that like technology was definitely an influence on my creativity in that regard. Okay, thank you so much, Michelle. Um, Fisayo. Okay. Um, thank you very much for having me on this summit. Um, I'm super honored to be yeah, um, among very interesting people like my fellow panelists and my host. Uh, blessed am I among, <laughs> among women. <laughs> Adora, I know, I know you will get it. Anyway, um, I, I, I'd like to echo Michelle's um, point about you know my whole career being influenced as a result of technology. Um, there is no way I'll be able to say that I'm a content creator. Like if the tools that I make my content on the platforms did not exist. Like, you know, in, before before 2005, there's nobody that was a YouTuber. Like this is this became a thing because of because some people decided to put their heads together and create a platform. And they didn't even create a platform with the intention of, you know, having YouTube was born on Valentine's Day mm. as a dating app. <laughs> and, um, you know, some people decided that, you know, videos could work and there was a technology for it and it just became a thing. So, you know, that technology has helped with collaborative tools like, like Aisha has mentioned. It has helped with design tools. I used to be a graphic designer. I used to be a user interface designer for many, many years. Um, it has helped me earn a living for a long time. And I have sort of, I've, I've taken like a video production skill that I've learned in a job. I've mixed it with something else. And I've sort of, I've, I've created a career around it. I've hired, you know, a, a bunch of people because of this skill, you know, providing jobs, um, giving to people, you know, impacting people, I think. Um, you know, we, we have currently, I, I, and like, I, I'm not saying it to brag, but we have like around a million people that follow us across all social media platforms. And one thing that really, really stands out for me is whenever I see comments like, this piece of work you've created made me feel better off than I came, like than, 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 I, than I was before. I came here, um, I was better off because of this thing I've learned from you. Everything else disappears. The followers, all of it doesn't mean anything. It's just the fact that there's value being created because yeah. of these platforms, because of these tools. And that's because, you know, I, I'm somebody that likes to read a lot. I like to learn stuff. And being able to translate that online into content or into something that people can learn from or be entertained by or be educated by, I think that is a very, very huge impact for me. So I, I think I owe technology a, a bunch of that. Um, and I'll just I'll just end that point. So I don't think it's too much time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Visayo. Um, and finally, Adora. Hi, Treasure. Hi, everyone. Um, this is very interesting for me because I feel like technology is the reason I, I'm being paid this salary. 
if I'm a software developer, right? If I and I work as a builder of tech, and if I could not build tech, maybe I don't know. Maybe I'll actually be a DJ. I don't know. As in, like a serious. Who knows? Um, but yeah, technology is thankful to technology. I have money in my account. First of all, you know, let let let's be happy about that. And it's also interesting because from my perspective, I get to be a builder and a customer. So um, building apps within my company that I even use, right? So we recently launched um, a new product on my team and I worked on that product. And then a different day I was using the app for something else and I was using the product but in a different context. And it was like a very beautiful thing for me. And obviously being able to use other apps as well, just understanding the engineering that goes behind it is also like, um, a thing, right? Um, technology helps my career in different ways. The first thing I'll talk about is productivity. Um, I mean, it has always been helping my productivity, to be honest, in terms of like, you know, calendars, managing your meetings. Like Aisha said, remote work has become a thing. Collaboration has become easier because of technology and, you know, things like that. Um, now that AI is also coming into like the forefront of like a bunch of things that we're doing, debugging code, for example, troubleshooting has become easier for me, you know, things like that. In my many careers, in my different lives, either as a nonprofit founder or a software engineer or an author or a DJ or whatever it is that I am, technology plays like a different role in different things for my community, for example, technology tools are the reasons why I can manage my communities and manage my teams effectively, right? I can engage the people in the community that need to be engaged in the proper way. Technology is also the reason why I was able to write and self-publish a first book. Same thing with Michelle here, right? We're able to write and self-publish our first book without going to knock on the door of publishers and say, please help us. We want to write a yeah. book, please to help us right you know so it's very interesting how technology empowers you to do whatever it is that you want to do so far as you can think about it right um and in my different careers it's you know just helps me be more efficient be more productive and to do anything that i want to do that i wouldn't have been able to do before if it did not exist yeah all right, thank you so much, Adora. Um, you mentioned AI while speaking, and that leads me to the next question, because, I mean, we're speaking on the impact of technology, and it feels like um, since late 2022 and the whole of this year, artificial intelligence has become a much bigger conversation, especially with content generation um, software like um, ChatGPT, Bard, and the likes. It feels like there's an arms race, but for um, artificial intelligence and it has brought about like a new set of problems and a new set of questions that we need to discuss so um, for people especially creators like you guys who are also um, tech enthusiasts um, what are your thoughts on artificial intelligence um, for some people some people feel like it's going to take a lot of jobs especially for writers people who now um, have to rely on um, artificial intelligence to come up with scripts, to come up with content. Other people feel like it's a good thing because, I mean, it's not just content generation that AI helps us with. It also helps us with automation and other aspects of our work. Um, what are your thoughts on it? I'm going to ask um, Aisha. We'll start with Aisha again and then we'll go back to everyone. So, yeah. It's perfectly fine. I think, um, you know, I've had to have many conversations in the past months about AI, especially with respect to how it affects, like, you know, people who have careers in content marketing and people who have built their careers around being able to write and writing being the core skill that they're offering to businesses. And it's like, if they can be outsourced so easily by ChatGPT, what do they do? Um, and, yeah. you know, here's, here's how I think about it, right? Like, I think... At this stage, we can't look at AI as something that, like writers, people who are doing content marketing, creators, we can't look at AI as something that is coming to take your jobs. Like, if if you're still looking at it as that that sort of through that lens, that's you know you're 
you're on the wrong side you know <laughs> you're on the wrong side of the of the discussion and i think it takes a bit of reframing really starting to identify the opportunity the way i like to think about it is you know striking finding opportunities to strike a balance between ai and your human creativity as creators as content marketers as writers you have to look beyond that core skill and think about like what you're really offering to a business what you can really um add you you have so much you know there's creativity there's intuition there's empathy all those things that you're able to offer are irreplaceable those things cannot be replicated by ai at this point so instead i think it's more efficient it's more important to look at how ai can enhance your productivity can um, increase your efficiency in your creative process and how you can use it to really get better outcomes and partner with it so you know so and that's that's what's encouraged i recently started a job on monday <laughs> at an ai enabled company and you know it's being here and just seeing how the depth of what ai can make possible and how people are spinning it how people are using it and this this comes from deep knowledge you know from actually trying it from testing things from being open and adaptable and not running away from the technology not shying away from it and actually just embracing it and thinking about what the next phase of your career could look like how can you empower yourself to do better work how can you empower yourself to be more creative how can you differentiate yourself in this market where you know there's tools your as a marketer right now as a content marketer as a writer your core skills that you're offering can be like i know how to write it has to mm. you know you need to be thinking about how do you actually create value for your customer for your target audience how are you infusing empathy how are you infusing creativity how are you differentiating from the market you know so i would say ai ai is great personally like you never catch me saying anything like i, I think there are definitely some negatives and there are some areas that we need to think about but in terms of AI being, you know, technology that we are all getting more and more familiar with, there's definitely lots of areas where I think it can, we can, you know, make a lot more impact by partnering with AI. So I would say embrace the technology, be adaptable, be open to it, try tests, look for, you know, just areas to get more and more familiar. And you might even start discovering like new things and new ways that you can really optimize your work and differentiate yourself in the market. But yeah. If you take anything away from what I said, it's get familiar, play with all the tools, play with everything. You know, there's so much, like so much that AI has made possible. If you if you look in the last like three years, the businesses that have come up, you know, based on AI, there's whole industries that have opened up that have completely AI enabled. Like people are making this thing work and they are leveraging it to really change the way that we're interacting with everything, with content, with healthcare, with think of any industry. There's an AI, you know, application and there's there's a way that you can bring it into your business, into your industry and really like empower yourself and really supercharge your workflow. So I would say just be open, be curious, be adaptable. And I think there's so much that you can do with AI when you when you think of it as a partner, more than like a competitor. It should be something that you're holding, working together with to you know enhance your work, your outcomes. Yeah. I love what you said about reframing your thinking. I think that's really, really important. Thank you so much, Aisha. Oh, uh, Michelle. <laughs> I guess it's my turn. Um, so I like everything that Aisha shared, by the way. I mean, it makes sense that you're working in an AI-enabled company. <laughs> um, but to add to that, there's something you said where you said, um, how can you, that like, we need to think about ways we can differentiate ourselves in, a, in the world where there are lots of tools. And the first thing that came to mind is stories, you know, like storytelling is something that I don't feel... It, it's something that is in it, you know, it needs to come from within. And there are no two stories that are identical. Two stories might be similar, but identical. It has to be you literally to replicate your story. And when you kind of understand life from that way, you channel more of yourself, your strengths, and the things that make you you when you approach things, as opposed to it being like, oh, there is a tool that can do exactly what I can do. There is no tool that can do exactly what you can do because there's no tool that is you. Um, you know, that's how I see it, right? So think of it like um, enhancement as opposed to replacement. Like, I don't feel like it's coming to replace you. It's coming to enhance what you can do. Like I, I, like I mentioned in the previous um, question about the project that we worked on, it was this very simple tool, Killbot, right? Like I've I had interactions with that tool prior in like in the past, but when I needed the when I needed it for my work, I was like, okay, 
how do I leverage this tool? I have this many things to write. I have this many profiles to write about people that I look up to and I respect. How can I leverage this tool to get what I want to get? And I'm going to be completely honest, if that tool did not exist, I do not think that I would have published that um, online magazine in the time frame that I did it, less than a month. Um, you know, so you have to be open, like Aisha, like you have to be open to the idea that something can make your workflow better as opposed to it being something that is coming to take away your work. Um, that's one thing. Another thing is your craft. Your, your, no, no matter what field you are in, whether you're a marketer, whether you're a creator, whether you're a designer, an engineer, your craft is always going to be your currency. You know, you have to keep working on your craft whether or not there is a new tool today or a new tool tomorrow. So you have to keep learning. You have to keep enhancing your craft. The things that your two hands can do, you always have to make it better, right? And for someone who is highly skilled, there will always be demand, you know, like it is what it is. The higher you go, the more you are able to, you know, confidently speak about the things that you do, the more you're going to find opportunities that are tailored specifically for you. And no tool can really replace that, you know, like if you really think about it, when you, when you, when you are deep in your craft, when you know what your stuff is and you're able to confidently speak about it and tell good stories about it, what tool is going to come and tell a story about your work that you can do to the best of your abilities more than you and also tell your story um and the third thing is using it to like expand to expose yourself and expand your wealth of knowledge right so for example if you're a designer they're like they've been talking about mid journey for over a year right go there play with it come up with like the craziest darnest prompts to create the most ridiculous things and see what that can do stretch your creative mind you know Think of the wildest things and just see the abilities of how your mind can work. That's something I feel like you can use like these AI tools for, as opposed to like, being scared of it, like, oh, this is going to come and replace me. Mm -mm. You know, you first need to be confident in the things that you're doing and the story that you have and in your crafts. And then you have to find other ways to continue to improve those things and learn about those things. Um, and then another thing is also connection, All right? Um, connecting with with people like if you're a creator i'm a creator you know using um ai to connect to your to your audience or connect to the people who are in your community um you know so you always have like finding how you can leverage it i feel like is 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 the advice i have in summary you know you need to be able to leverage it to get the desired results as opposed you know just shying away from it or running away from it because when you leverage things, you would use them to the best of your abilities and you use them to your advantage. So that is how I feel like you should, we should approach the conversation about artificial tech in intelligence as opposed, you know, saying, I don't want to dabble with this thing because it's quite, I think it's here to stay. It's been here for a minute. So we're going to be having it for a long time. Thank you so much, Michelle. Fisayo. Okay, I think something we've all talked about so far from the, but the first question and the second question has to do with value delivery. Um, I, I, I like to think of it as a coin, you know, both sides of the coin. And in economics class, they, they basically teach us that um, money, pun intended, but on the flip side of the coin, money is a store of value. On the one hand, you have uh, money being given to someone. On the other hand, you have this skill. Um, the skill that you have developed, you know, like like Michelle said, the works of your hands. Um, you have the skill that you've developed, and that is also some kind of value that you are providing. There's no way that, unless you steal the money, there's no way you get money unless you provide something of value to someone. So um, I'd like to I'd like to buttress that point again that you have to provide value somehow to be able to be worthy of you know of something. Um, in terms of AI, I think it is amazing, and I think it's, it's a bit scary as well. Um, again, the best way you can go about this phase of, of, of life is actually by, again, delivering value. I think, I think AI is meant to complement your work and not necessarily be a replacement of, or like the end of your, it, it's kind of, it shouldn't be a replacement, it should complement the thing that you're doing. And for me, in terms of my own work, in terms of how AI has impacted me, I try to leverage these tools. I, I try to use 
especially tools like ChatGPT to maybe order some of my steps or just like plan stuff out. Um, I think I think we should embrace it again. Uh, but pressing the point, I think we should embrace it. Um, we should provide value so that we can you know kind of remain re relevant in this in this phase in, the, in this current shift. Thank you so much, Visaya. Adora. Hi, again. Um, so yeah, like everything, AI is good and bad. Um, the phones you use are great, they're also bad. Um, the cars you drive are great, but they also cause problems to the environment. So at the end of the day, you're still going to have to pick your poison. If you find many reasons why AI will be bad, you would find a lot of them. And if you look out for reasons why AI will be good and you can use that to enhance yourself, enhance your career and things like that. You would also find a lot of them. So it's interesting, but that's just it. And that's the game. I also believe that AI actually will replace jobs. And I don't think that's a bad thing because at the end of the day, life and our careers are dynamic. Um, Netflix started as a video club right? They were renting CDs, literally. And it has grown to what it has become today. If when they were trying to build that streaming service and, you know, get movies and things like that, everybody was saying, oh, so the people that are now selling the attendance in the, you know, physical spaces that are selling the CDs will lose their jobs. That company wouldn't have grown to become what it is today. And that company wouldn't have made other companies decide that they want to build something like that. I mean, Disney already existed, but now they have their own streaming service. Apple has its own streaming service, right? Showmax and the Prime Videos and a bunch of them, HBO, like they've come up ever since then. And what's happened is if that, since even if that role doesn't exist anymore, the role of the people attending to other people that come to rent movies in that video club or whatever it was called in America, because that's what we used to call it here, right? If, even if those people don't exist anymore, that role doesn't exist anymore. Other opportunities have been created just because of that innovation. So I think AI is going to make a lot of jobs redundant. But the truth is, in the same way, it's going to create many more jobs too. And we should also look at ourselves, not just as users of AI, but people that could also be creators of AI as well. We can create with AI, we can build with AI, we can innovate on top of AI, we can contribute to that ecosystem. We can build models and use them to do creative things. We can We can use, and this is not even from the point of everybody has to be an engineer, right? You can use like no-code tools. There are a bunch of like no-code tools and there will be more that will come up very soon, right? A bunch of no-code tools that you can do integrations with and innovate with and imagine plugging ai into that just imagine like the power that you would unlock so i think that the possibilities are endless the hard truth that some people might not want to hear is that some of your jobs might go but the amazing thing is that like i don't think anybody wants to stay in a specific spot forever like i'm an engineer now but if you check back in 15 years and i'm still doing the same thing that i'm doing now i feel like i've changed because i've not grown so i think there would be opportunities for growth to exist just because the ecosystem has become dynamic and it's going to force people to step out of their comfort zones but i don't think it's a reason to panic or you know make anybody feel scared i think what we should focus on as problems in ai are you know things around ethics and things that you know we can talk about and find a way to fix but not try but as opposed to like saying let's not embrace ai just so that it doesn't change the way things are everything around you will change your life changes every day so if you know the tools that you're using in your career change as well i think that's more growth and more opportunities for you to even do stuff as opposed to the latter well said, guys. Thank you so much for um, lending your opinions on that topic. Um, a concern that usually comes up when we talk about technology is how um, with more use of technology, people become less creative. Actually, I feel like even when we tell stories, when we watch films, um, technology is usually painted, painted in this robotic light that would come to stifle the creativity of man, right? And we have seen this also, um, if you introduce the same prompt on ChatGPT, 
in two different places, you might probably get the same thing. So how do we, um, as creators, how do we preserve our creativity? How do we preserve that human touch while also taking advantage of technological tools, right? Um, I'll start with Aisha. Okay, let's go. <laughs> um, you know, I think it's really like thinking about the technology again as a partner and not, you know, the entirety of your work. For me, when I think about the way I use technology, especially like AI technology right now, I think of it as a starting point. Like when I think of the way I used to approach my work before generative AI became a thing, um, it was a completely different process. You know, my research was completely different. You know, things like keyword research, things like just even customer research, audience research, all of that looked very, very different. The workflow was different. It was a lot more time consuming, a lot more resource consuming as well. But with the advent of generative AI tools like ChatGPT um, and other tools as well that are able to help, you see that what you can then do is cut down that research time and it frees you up with so much more time to focus on creative aspects. You can look for, you can experiment with like prompts to just open up your mind, you know, and, and get you on that path. So I like to think of it as a starting point as opposed to it being like the be all and do all. It's not like, you know, I, I have a project and then I think, yeah, we're going to go ChatGPT put it in and my output is, and you know, it's, it's like, we're done. That's not what the process looks like. And if it looks like that for you, you're, you know, I don't think that you're approaching in the best way possible because you're not allowing yourself to leverage your creativity and leverage your skills and the insights that you already have that you know about your work, the things you know about the audience that you're trying to reach, the things you know about, you know, the processes that you've been, you've been working with for, you know, however long. And I think another thing is also thinking about it as like not forgetting what your goal is. Because when you start out, and, and I'll use myself as an example, a lot of the time when I'm working on any project, oftentimes it's to either like connect with, you know, connect better with an audience or educate an audience or maybe showcase the customer. There's always a goal. And that goal, sometimes it's, you know, it's something superficial like revenue <laughs> but a lot of the time in my work it's typically things that are more like connected to the brand and connected to the perception of the brand and when you, when you have that goal in mind and a lot of the time is also to make the customer or the audience's life easier right so when you have that goal in mind that empathy that you're also bringing into your process is something that AI can't do for you you know you're really thinking like is this content accessible is it inclusive there's so many things that you need to be thinking about right for example I, I attended an event recently and we're talking about like inclusivity in AI and when you think back it's like these AI models aren't being trained on aren't necessarily always being trained on the true state of the world which is you know the state of diversity that we're in they're being trained on sometimes data sets that are not an accurate representation of the way the world that we're living in and the customers that you're trying to reach so also infusing that thought and that knowledge that you also have of your world that you have of the customers insights from literally talking to them you know face to face being able to bring all of that into your process is important you can't throw all of that away um, and focus on just the inputs that, you know, you're getting from the tools that you're working with, because at the end of the day, your role and what sets you apart, what makes you different, what ensures that your outcomes will still be effective are those other things that you can infuse into your work, those skills and knowledge and empathy and intuition that you have. And, you know, that that's what really makes everything different. That's what makes the difference. That's what. That's what sets you apart. So I would say just finding that balance is very important. You you need to remember what your goal is. You need to think about what your process looked like before. Look for opportunities to, you know, optimize your work for sure, like cut down the times, but don't forget what you're bringing and don't forget what your end goal is and what you're actually trying to achieve. Um, and I think having those two things, have, not losing sight of those two things will really help to make sure that we're finding a good balance between creativity and, you know, using technology. Thank you very much, Aisha. Michelle, please. Um, yes, I'm going to answer this question in with, in with two things. The first thing is, the way I like to think of creativity um, is education. You know, I feel like 
creativity education plays a huge part in, in creativity and not education as in like um standard formal education this is education that you have as a person you know so in the books that you read in the things that you watch in the music you listen to in the things that you're exposed to you know so i think the first thing as a person maybe a creative person um would be to ex expose yourself to a wide variety of information and knowledge, right? Seek inspiration from different sources. When you're able to seek inspiration from different sources, you become a, you become a, a you're, you're like a walking myriad of creativity because you have influence from Obonjaya's music, you have influence from Beyonce's music, you have influence from a time travel show, like that becomes who you are. And when you are now that person or when you are working on being that person, it translates into the questions that you ask, right? You're the, the same, the way someone else is going to ask a question, um, another person is asking, it's only way you're going to ask that question because maybe you are able to make a, you're able to, you know, think about this thing from think about the, the subject at hand from, you're, you're able to make reference to something else that you have read or something else that you've listened to. And that just changes the perspective of how you're gonna ask that question, right? So let's even assume you are at a point where you and a friend or you and three other friends have gone into ChatGPT, for example, and you put all three of you put the same prompts and all three of you got the same answers and all three of you have the same ideas. Now, all thoughts and ideas mean nothing without action. Like it is what it is. Everyone can have an idea. Everyone can have a thought. Everyone can have the exact same idea. But it all boils down to the execution of it. Like, how do you execute it? And that exposure and that education that you have is still going to translate into how you execute your ideas, right? So if, if you are worried about the fact that maybe artificial intelligence is going to get all of us to a place where we are all thinking the same things or having the same ideas. I don't personally believe so because I feel like we're all different people. Um, but even if you get to that point, think about how you're going to exec execute the idea. You know, the devil is in the execution always. Two people will have the exact same ideas, but I mean, we're seeing threads and Twitter right now, like same idea, different execution, you know, like it is what it is. So you need to be knowledgeable. You need to seek information, seek inspiration from places that are unconventional. You know, even if you're a designer and you you are watching or looking up to all the famous designers, you should have people in art or people who make music, who inspire you and who you listen to and who you learn from, because that's what makes you, and that's what's going to make that difference between you and another creative person. But yeah, that's, that's what I think. Thank you so much, Michelle. That was brilliant. Fisayo. Yeah, um, I totally, I totally agree. Um, I think, it, yes, it it makes sense to be concerned about the, the dumbing down of ideas, the the sameness, the, the sort of bland nature of some type of technology, but just just the way I said in the previous point, um, we should we should look at it as complementary and not a replacement. For me. I always, I, I use these tools to save time. I use it for organization. Um, I use it to do, to make my processes quicker. I've, I've like, right now we're actually doing something where on set for something that we've been shooting throughout the entire week. Uh, we've been shooting this for months now, or so, like over a month now. Um, and I know how I've used these tools to, help me just do stuff that I would just not want to do, or it would take me time to do. And it it wouldn't just, it's, it's, it might not necessarily have that creative aspect of it. It's just like that boring organizational, like analytical stuff. And I just do it with these tools. And it really, really saves me. What, what we cannot deny though, is the originality of someone that is very, very skilled someone that has years of experience. Um, just like Michelle said, that years of experience, those, those, those years of experience will help you to execute something in a very brilliant way. And I think that is what matters. We, we cannot ignore the human elements. We cannot ignore the skill that someone brings to the table. Um, I think, again, complementary. Let's be complementary. Bring your own self into your own piece of work. And I'm, I'm probably just speaking from my from my own perspective, from my own years of experience, of my own 
you know, niche or whatever it is. But um, having your own um, perspective, having your own authenticity would help you to make something, a piece of work, novel, that would make an impact in people's lives. And you can actually use these tools to help you make that thing come out faster. Thank you so much, Fisayo. Adora. Hi, okay. So I think that, um, like everyone has said, think about it like a collaborator and not a replacement, right? Embrace it as a tool and not a replacement. And like, start from there. Let it help support that process rather than let that be the thing and then copy paste um, and then, you know, just run with it so that you can also bring your human self to it. And I want to like sort of give an example, even from the context of businesses and companies, for example, let's imagine I was trying to start a business and let's say Aisha was also starting, trying to start a business and we both go to AI tools and we ask AI tools to generate a business model for the both of us. And just imagine if we we're supposed to go and meet the same investor by chance. That is a disaster. And even if somehow we are both able to raise money and you know we start our businesses and we are leveraging AI for every single decision making and every single process. You know how you think about like um competitive advantage like you know how they say oh is your idea where are you organized there's like a vrio you know analysis thing that they use in business school and in that point like two of you are the same so what makes your business competitive over the other one what makes you more innovative what what would make a customer want to like buy into your vision or your idea or even like purchase your product or your service or whatever it is that you are selling in the first place when it's clear that there's nothing special that you bring to the table because imagine everybody was doing the same thing right so it's important to bring yourself to whatever it is that you're doing at the end of the day nobody can be you right so there is this there is this personal thing that you bring to you know the fact that you allow that part of yourself show like whatever it is that you're inspired by, let that, whatever experiences you've had in the past, let that also shine through the ways that you do things. Let's, uh, especially as a creative person, if you're trying to tell a story, let it be through your perspective. Imagine if, or rather through your lens, like um, imagine if I was going to write a book and then I went to an AI tool and then I said, okay, generate chapter one for me. The title should be X, Y, Z. And he writes it in the, and even if I say, okay, use this particular tone or whatever, he writes it in, it's always going to be the same way. It's always going to be the same tone. If I don't bring my own personal experiences to it, if I don't, you know, try to add some kind of storytelling to let the reader understand why I'm writing what I'm writing and why I even chose to write it in the first place, they wouldn't be able to relate to the thing that I am talking about, because there is no, there's no human touch there, unfortunately. And the thing about human beings is that they can forget what they saw, forget what they read, forget what they heard. But most times, I don't think people would forget how an experience made them feel. So, as somebody that is thinking about integrating AI and not losing that touch, you have to make sure that you are whatever it is that you are doing is also something that no matter how much of AI you are using to help with your productivity, you are constantly investing in the emotional banks of the people that are supposed to use or interact with whatever it is that you're selling at the end of the day, because that's what will keep them coming back to you. Thank you so much, guys. I like the fact that we touched on storytelling, we touched on empathy, we touched on the fact that AI should be complementary and it shouldn't just be all the all the parts of our work. I think that's very, very important. Um, I want us to also talk about how um, the tech landscape in Africa, so I'm bringing it home now to Africa because I mean, it's a creator summit in Africa, um, how it is changing, like how it's changing, how the growth of tech startups, tech businesses, within the past few months, we've seen 
a lot of new companies sprout up, Full Gap, Mainstack, all these companies, um, how they're going to impact the growth of um, creativity in Africa, especially in different industries, not just in the creator sector specifically, but like with engineering, with design, hospitality, how, how is creativity and technology, how is the growth of these industries and the companies within these industries, how are they going to affect creativity? So I'm going to start with Aisha. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is a great question. And I think it's one that I, I think about often. Um, you know, it's just, it's so amazing to see, first of all, like the innovation that is coming out of Africa. And all of that is like possible because of technology, you know, is, I think is incredible to see. We're seeing so many different kinds of businesses across different industries. We're seeing an amalgamation of marketers, designers, developers, people are coming together and building solutions to our biggest pain points. And sometimes some of them are not even for our biggest pain points, it's just creative solutions that are just really changing the face of what technology looks like, what work looks like, what um, you know, empowering ourselves look like, what making money and opening new paths for income looks like. So I would say there's more to come. And personally, like I'm here for it. Every day I see like something new come out of Africa. I see a new like fundraising announcement. I see a new innovation. You know, there's so many really cool businesses people are solving for period pain people are solving for how people are collaborating remotely people are solving for so many let's sell her like look at you know seller is here and has done what he has done so personally i think i think there's so so much that's happening and i think that you know these hubs all these like the, the efforts that we've taken in the past years to really bring like technology, pe people together for technology, all these hubs, things like CC Hub, spaces that have been created to bring people together, to connect creatives, to connect technology experts together, to allow people to have the space to share ideas, explore, just explore and talk and meet each other. Um, I think that that has been so beneficial for us. And this is the impact that we're seeing and we're going to continue to see it because this is something that is we're building up on businesses that are, you know, also that have been established, companies like Photowave, Paystack. We can see the things that they're also doing, the events that they're putting together, the spaces that they're creating as well to foster more of this collaboration and connection across the industry. And I think that's what's important. That's what's going to really continue to help us like come up with these interesting ideas and solve our deepest problems. Um, and outside of that as well, I think there's also like increased access to everything, right? Just because of this explorations that we've been able to do, there's increased access to technology, increased access to resources, opportunities. What's a career for someone who's living in Africa look and working in tech, what it looked like before, like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, is completely different from what's possible now. You know, with the advent of remote work as well, with the technologies that we now have access to, with the resources, the fundraising that is now possible, people are able to have such dynamic and interesting careers and work across multiple industries and really deliver value and stretch themselves to the extent of their creativity. So I think there's so much that we've been able to achieve in that way and is, is only going to, you know, continue to grow. Um, and one other thing I definitely must touch on, and this is because it's also a space that I feel like I'm working in, is community, right? Like the advent of technology and the growth of technology in Africa, we've seen that we've seen over the past couple of years has fostered beautiful spaces, you know, communities that are bringing together professionals in different spaces. We have lots of technology communities. If you're in marketing, I have to, I just have to plug Smarketers Hub. Like, yes, we have communities like Smarketers Hub. I'm sorry, I, I'm going to do it, you know? And, and I think the possibilities to even be able to bring people together, to continue to share these resources, to continue to exchange um, insights about like, you know, just stories as well. Like you're, you're seeing what's possible and, I think personally that that's such a really powerful thing, being able to even expose the rest of the ecosystem to, look, this is what this person is doing. This is how they started their career from Agege. This is how this person started their career from somewhere in Kigali. Like, this is what people are doing and this is what technology has enabled, um, you know, and this is what's possible. And this is, I think we're also even just scratching the surface of what's possible. So um, there are definitely lots of areas that I would say when I think of like the landscape in Africa and this is a discussion people always pull me in because when you work in like foreign spaces everyone is interested in discussing what's happening in Africa and you have to talk about these things so it's a, it's a great question and I'm really curious about the insights of the other panelists as well but for me I would say 
I'm enjoying it. I'm loving it. I'm loving the innovation. I'm loving the new startups. I'm loving the resources. I'm loving the communities. I'm loving the growth. And I think, you know, there's only so much more to come. Thank you so much, Aisha. Um, actually, would have loved to ask this question to Fisayo and Michelle, but I just realized that we are running out of time. And there's one question that I must ask. And this question is, what advice would you give aspiring creatives navigating this changing landscape? I feel like this is a question that um, a lot of our viewers are going to really appreciate. So um, I'm going to give the floor to Fisayo first and then Michelle. So yeah, and then Aisha, of course. So yeah, Fisayo, please take it away. Fisayo, you're on mute, I think. Not me ranting and, and speaking. <laughs> and I was on mute. Wow. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's okay. I said, um, in terms of the advice I would give to um, aspiring people trying to come into the like the, the landscape, I think I, I've said it before. I'll say it again. Like, um, focus on value first. And I mean, it, money is good. Though. But like, if you have that first, like if that's the first thing that you are thinking of, I don't, I don't know that that's the best way to approach it. I'm not saying that you shouldn't like aim to earn as much as possible, but you want to focus on like the problem. I've been fortunate to speak with so many amazing like founders, like people that have done great stuff and just hearing from them, I think one thing that they always focus on is like that problem. It, it sounds so cliche, like solve a problem, but really like that is the, like we said, creating value. How are you going to create value if you're not solving something? If you're not like making something that wasn't good before, making it um, good or making it even better, you know, it can even be something as little as customer experience. Um, Nigeria is very, very famous for having bad customer service and i think that like that's one aspect another aspect is education like people want like t training people teaching people stuff letting them learn something there's so many aspects like there's so many aspects and so many things that i think we can focus on but find a way to solve problems and i think everything else will be added onto you sounds like a bible verse <laughs> but for real find a way to solve problems first Thank you so much, Visayo, Michelle. <laughs> that was a scripture in itself. <laughs> um, my advice for um, aspiring creators, I think the first thing would be to be curious. Um, curiosity is one of the fundamental skills that I always like advise my mentees and anyone who literally asks me any question, you know, be curious, ask questions, always ask why, always ask what, always ask how, you know, like take things to like, to like the fundamental level and, as a creator, how that translates for you is when you, even when you like, maybe you see how other people are doing things, you know, just like, oh, I like the way that's done. It's like, how did they do that? Like, you know, what can I learn from that? Like, how can I use my own abilities to achieve that, you know, without, with while making it original to myself, you know, so be curious. And no matter how big you grow or how high up in the creator um, um, level that you get, so you always need to keep being curious. Um, the second thing is be deliberate about the things that you consume. Um, and I say this because we are in this, like social media is <laughs> what social media is. There's a lot of information going around. There's a lot of things going around. And as a creator, someone who is trying to like find your own space in that, like in the noise that is already existing, you need to be deliberate about the things that you consume, you know, because if you if you let the noise get inside you, it's hard for you to function, you know? So be deliberate about the people that you're following, be deliberate about people that you look up to, know why you follow those people, know what you're learning from them, know what they provide you or what's um, set, what, like what, what they offer you, you know? So you are, just be deliberate and, you know, be focused about like what you're trying to achieve. Um, the third thing I would say is to collaborate. Something I'm hearing a lot of recently is, you know, about how people are trying to do similar things and have like similar ideas. And it's like, oh, I need to I need to establish that I'm doing um, I'm competing with this other person. Collaborate, you know, like 
find how to work with other people you know what are your strengths what's this other person's strengths how can you both make magic um i think that's really something that i think would be imperative for anyone who is trying to build a creator career um Another thing is to lean into your strengths. I should have even started with this one because if you're not leaning into your strengths, what are you going to lean into? You have to lean into the things that make you you. So if you're someone who, like for me as a creator, that's if anyone here wants to know my biggest hack and my biggest trick, I lean into my strengths 100%. You wouldn't see me trying to do things that are not for me, you know, like I know what makes me me. I know what makes me special and I'm going to tap into it until the very last day. That's what you need to figure out. What makes you, you? And you wouldn't really figure that out by maybe just asking yourself. You need to keep doing things, you know. The more you do things, the more you see what you're capable of, the more, you are, the more you get confidence, and the more you're able to own your space and own who you are. And then you can now fully lean into those things. But you first need to, like, do things. And like Fisayo said, provide value. And the fifth thing I would say is to experiment and take risks. Like, this is a box. Just be thinking outside that box, box you know, like, just forget about whatever is happening in the box. No matter what any other person is doing that exists inside that box, just make a challenge for yourself and say, you know, I'm going to think outside the box because there is an abundance of realities that exist outside the box. And you will be surprised by what you can actually create for yourself by just thinking about something in a way the next person is not going to think about it. And what does thinking outside the box look like in practical terms? You know, it's one, you lean into your strengths, you know who you are, you know the things that make you special, you know what you're capable of, and then you start to find opportunities that can only be presented for you in particular, you know, that's what thinking outside the box is, because what's inside the box is how every other person is similar, how every other person can present as a creator or can present as a designer, you know, but what exists outside that box is what makes what is particular to you, so you always need to think of how other ways you can do things, you know, not the traditional way. And always, like, embrace, you know, risk. There's, once you take a big risk, like, probably a big reward waiting for you at the end. So always experiment, you know. When you start off, like, try different things. Write, sing. I'm not sing, I guess. Write. Create a certain type of content. Create another type of content. Until you find the things that make you happy or make you excited and you continue to do those things, you know. So experiment and take risk as well. But yeah, that's me. Thank you so much, Michelle. Adora. Hi. Um, so yeah, one thing that I want to say is as someone, especially I'm going to talk to like the young people that I'm going to talk to everybody. As someone that is young, there's one thing that you have right now that you'll never get back with this time. So you want to take advantage of that time in like whatever ways that you can. This is the best time for you to learn things, try something new. I don't see failures basically and i don't also see um a successful person that hasn't like failed before so it's either you win or you try something and it doesn't work and then you learn from it and you go do something else right but like it's not a thing of oh you failed you're a disgrace you know you're an abomination to the family you're an abomination to yourself i don't think anyone should think like that um so yeah, definitely have a growth mindset embrace continuous learning and open up your mind because there's some times where you would win and there's some times where you would get the opportunity to learn so take those opportunities when you get them when they come your way another thing that i would say is that you should build a, a strong community around the work that you create because this community consists of the people that you know normally would appreciate and support the work that you do these are the people that you will engage with. And these are like, if you're selling stuff, right? These are probably like um, the places where your customer base will come from, people that will advocate for you and they will drive your success. So make sure that you are constantly listening to them, um, engaging them as well and um, different things. And there's also one thing about, there was one book I read when I used to work in an agency and the, the, there was something in the book and it said something about creativity, love and constraint. And I don't think you should see constraints as limitations, as someone that is supposed to be a creative person. You should see them as opportunities that can inspire unique ideas because these are where these opportunities would come from. 
right? And I've tweeted this thing before. And I remember when I tweeted it, like it sparked some people were arguing with themselves. But there was something I said where you should be you should be confident in your stupid ideas because that's how innovative you know solutions are born. Something paraphrased like that. But that's the truth. I think if anybody wanted to at as at the time Skype was built, right? If anybody wanted to build a video conferencing tool like that, they would have called the person he does, right? At about the time Snapchat was built, if anybody wanted to build it, they would have said, please go and sit down. You don't know what you're doing. But guess what? Somebody built it and other people went and copied it. And now it's a thing, right? So like, and even how like social media started, right? If we go back into you know, the late 1990s and the early 2000s and things like that. So, like, don't think, embrace the constraints as a reason to tap into, like, you know, some kind of uniqueness and never be afraid of, you know, talking about your seemingly stupid ideas in public. The truth is many of them will be stupid, don't get me wrong. But but the few that will, um, like, get you the few that would be groundbreaking will be so amazing. I would set you apart from everybody else. And it goes back to what um, Ms. Michelle was saying about thinking outside of the box, right? Because if you're in the box with everybody else, trust me, you're doing the same thing everybody's doing and there's really nothing special about you. Um, and the last thing I would say is that it's also embracing risk-taking is also a thing especially for the young people as you're young and you have like a lot of time. And um, I was going through quotes sometime earlier this year and I saw like a quote from Mark Zuckerberg that said like the greatest risk in life is not taking any risk at all. And that's, that sounds cliche, I know, but it's actually the truth because if you're always in your comfort zone, you would never tap into that full potential that you have i'm a very big fan of giving everything giving myself completely and dying empty and i preach that as well whenever i get the chance right everything that you can possibly do like michelle said right sing if you can sing please go and sing write sing dance make videos people have built businesses just because they sat down in front of their phone they started making videos and they saw the possibilities so the only thing you feel inside of you that is worth tapping into, don't be afraid. There are so many times people told me you wouldn't do it, that I did not do it and actually listen to them. And the days I, I started telling those people to shut up when they told me I couldn't do it, there's a lot that I've done within that short time. If I did not listen to people, I would have written my first book earlier than 2021 when I wrote it. But someone said, oh, no, don't write it. Nobody's going to read it. My cousin wrote a book and he did And I said, okay, it's fine. I'm not going to write. And if I continue telling myself that and telling myself I can't do something every time I had what seemed like a stupid idea and I went and told somebody about it, we will not be having this panel session by now. So, yeah, just follow your heart. Take calculated risk. As much as we're talking about taking risk, you should also make sure that there is some sort of logical thinking to that. Tap into your community, embrace a growth mindset, and leverage constraints because that's where unique ideas would come from. If there's anything else I said, I don't remember it, but I hope that this is enough for you. Thank you so much, Adora. Um, someone is asking, what's the name of the book you read? I don't remember. It was a long time ago when I was working in at the agency i will google creativity loves constraints and i may find something but i think it's seth godin's book seth godin i think it was his book i'm not sure i'll check and if i find the book and the title i will tweet about it if i don't tweet about it i don't remember i'm sorry okay thank you aisha yeah you know i was listening to everyone speak and share their last you know words for our, our listeners and even me i was like ah. I have nothing else to add, though. They've said it all. <laughs> I think so much, you know, has been said already. And if I'm going to add anything, it will be just these few things. First is be excited about your career. Listen, like, you don't know how much you can achieve by just being excited about what you're trying to do, being excited about your work, being excited about where you are in your life. You may look around you and look and think, oh, you're not, you know, you're not, you've not achieved so many things. Other people have done. 
forget about all of that and just be excited about the process that you are on. Each day that you leave making any sort of, you know, difference in your work, writing a story, you know, documenting your processes, whatever it is that you're doing, that day is spent doing that thing. And that's what you've done with that day. The next day is another one. You're not going to get it back. So you need to leave your your time that you have here, that you're spending, getting familiar with yourself and your career. You need to be excited about that process because the more excited you are, the more open-minded you are, the more curious you are, the more adaptable you are, the more you're willing to experiment and test things, the more you find sort of those niches and you discover things about yourself things about the industry that you're working in things about the people that you're trying to reach and that that's how you grow that's how you make an impact you know so i would say be excited about what you're doing be excited about your career enter every day with excitement and with the the zeal and the mindset to explore new possibilities to read new things to be open to anything be open to a random conversation on the street be open to you know talking to someone else someone random in a different team in an office in your office just be excited and open and curious you know um and i think that mindset and that just it is a mindset that mindset is so helpful and <laughs> I'm speaking from experience because I, it's like polarizing experience, um, two polarizing situations, right? I've worked in this, in a space where, you know, I spent all my days going to work, not feeling really excited, not feeling motivated and for a variety of reasons. Right. Um, but that's how I was feeling. And that greatly impacted the kind of work that I was doing, it impacted how much I searched, impacted how much I extended myself. I started to mentally limit myself because I wasn't excited about what I was doing. I wasn't excited about my career. I wasn't excited about where I was. So you need to, if you're not feeling excited, you need to dig into that feeling. Don't accept it and feel like, you know what, this is what it is. It's work. You're never, nobody likes work anyway. We're all just working to survive. We are working to survive, but you can be excited about it. You can be interested in what you're doing. You can be, you can come in with that positive mindset and that willingness to learn and stretch yourself and extend your mind and have conversations and be open. And I think there's so many things that you'd achieve if you think about things that way. The second thing, and you know, it's something that people have probably already said, but I would just say, own your story. It's so, so important to own your story. You need to know where you started from. You need to know where you are right now. You need to have an idea of what you're trying to do, where you're going to own your story and be confident and comfortable telling it anywhere. If someone random asks you, oh, what, what have you been doing? Where did you come from? Tell your story. Say it so many times that you're so familiar with it that, you know, it's someone wakes you from sleep and they're like, uh-uh, well, who are you and what are you doing? You have, you know what you're going to say. You know your answer. Own your story because you know, as you move through life as a creator, as someone who's trying to build a career, whether in marketing, whatever, you know, wherever it is that you're working, that story is what really sets you apart. That story is what differentiates you. That context that you're bringing is what sets you apart from another person. Let me use myself as an example. If I'm speaking to any business now, there's no way I will miss mentioning the context of markets that I've gotten living in Lagos, Nigeria, living in Guadalajara, Mexico, living in London, now working in Paris, there's no way I will miss saying all of that because I know so, that I've learned so much and I've grown so much as a person from all of those experiences. And I have to contextualize my story in that way. I won't just introduce myself as a content marketer because I'm not just the next content marketer there. I have so many diverse experiences and it's part of my story now. So you need to constantly like document your story, get familiar with your story and really identify like how you're selling yourself to people. Own that story continue to say it everywhere until everybody's tired and everybody knows you everybody knows that okay this is this person's unique path and you know there's no two people that are going to be like you you know so own that story get comfortable telling it get comfortable sharing about your work talk you know figure out what what your comf like where you i guess what your comfort is you know some people prefer to share about their work by like making videos some people prefer to write i write if you go to my website you see my personal blog i document sort of my career and the steps that i'm taking but whatever it is that feels comfortable and feels right for you embrace it and tell that story so i'll just take it again two short things be excited about your career be open-minded and own your story that's it from me Thank you so much. I've had an amazing time. I hope you guys have as well. Um, that's the end. That's the end. Thank you so much, everyone, for showing up today, um, for just sitting with us and talking about tech and creativity. I had a wonderful time. And thank you so much to our viewers, our listeners. I hope you had an amazing time as well. Um, yeah, that's the end of today's session. 
Tomorrow we're having another session by 9 a.m. And we're going to have so many wonderful speakers tomorrow. So please, um, please come, please show up. Um, thank you so much also to our sponsors, Flutterwave, St. Paul's, and Money Africa. We love you. We appreciate you. And so, yeah, that's it. Everybody, good night. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Aisha. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Treasure. Well done. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.